Hey guys, welcome back. Before I even have said a word, you can probably tell the humidity levels in Boston. I'll just leave it at that. Today I have a video I'm so excited to bring you because it's a collaboration with a good friend of mine here on YouTube, Andy from Techno Cupcake. We had this idea to do sort of an eco summer makeup sun care focused video collaboration and I thought it was a really great fun idea and an excuse for me to buy a new product which I'll tell you about in just a minute. Andy from Techno Cupcake is the definition of a true beauty junkie. If you aren't already subscribed to her, I think you would really enjoy her channel. She's also increasingly been incorporating more green and eco products into her uh, collection and routines and products she shows on Instagram and things like that. So if you aren't already watching her videos, I think you would enjoy her. She's also a new mom, relatively new mom. I think her daughter is under a year old. So she's just a, like a ray of sunshine in the YouTube beauty community and she's so always been just so supportive and so nice. So it's just really nice to have a friendship with her. So make sure that you go watch her video. I'm really excited to see the kind of look she created. This is the look that I created and I'll tell you, I tried filming this makeup look a couple of weeks ago and I didn't really like the way it came out so I was gonna redo it and then, <laughs> I had a really, really bad flare of an eye infection. I've had a sty slash persistent chalazion, I think that they're called, in this eye for like literally six months. And it's just taken a long time to resolve and go away. I've consulted with regular medical doctors. I've consulted with my medical intuitive. He was like, don't touch it, whatever you do. And I just like something got the better of me and I tried to like squeeze it out and it just got really really bad. The active inflammation only lasted a couple like two or three days um, and then it seemed to resolve quite quickly actually my medical intuitive Adam helped me pinpoint some um, like what to do for it. I basically was doing Epsom salt soaks alternating with ice and then I was doing a very diluted organic oregano essential oil in coconut oil um, tincture, I guess, on the lid morning and evening. Not that you guys need to know how I was treating my eye, but it's almost gone. And what I'm doing is not wearing any makeup whatsoever on the upper lid because for the last six months I have been continuing to wear makeup on this eye. And I just think that, you know, like I'm going to hold off on doing that until this is like really completely resolved. So literally what I've been doing on just an everyday basis is like some definition on the lower lash line and wearing like a bold lip to work most days. And I'm so into the look. It's like so fun to just have like kind of minimal makeup elsewhere and then like boom. Initially I had wanted to do kind of like a summer pinup makeup look. I saw Lisa Eldridge post a video of just like a super dramatic beautiful perfected black cat eye and like a lip just like this and I was like that's what I'm doing for my summer eco sun care focused makeup video with Andy. It just like wasn't meant to be. I was not gonna slap a whole bunch of black liquid liner on my eye when it's still healing. However, I do get a fair amount of requests to show you guys my winged liner. So when my eye is completely healed, I definitely will. But so the two sort of eco summer sun care makeup products I decided to incorporate in this look are the Carrie Grand 365 SPF 28. So in the first part of the um, not me talking when we transition into the look, I am going to show you my skincare because I consider this to be a skincare step. So I used this so you can see how it looks and applies and I waited about half an hour before I went in and then filmed doing my makeup. And then the product that I purchased specifically for this video that I want to touch on quickly here because I'm actually going to put it in the mail back to Net-a-Porter, net a -Porte, whatever. So it's the Ilia Moon Dance Radiant Translucent Powder SPF 20. I had been in the market to get one of these sorts of products. It's a sort of on-the-go translucent powder that's housed in a brush applicator like this. I had wanted to either get the color science one or the eminence one both of which are sort of more natural brands i think they all use non-nano zinc oxide this is at 19 percent you know i've given this product a pretty fair trial over the last two weeks and i just i don't like it enough to keep it i think it was 20 something or 30 dollars 
My main issue with it is that I just can't tell. So basically what it is, is this is the closed position. You can turn it to all the way, we'll open it so that the powder can come out. And then once you have enough powder that has come out, you're supposed to change it to this buff setting and then just buff the powder in. My main issues are that even when it's open, I don't feel like it dispenses a lot of powder and I'm really like in here, like going like this. And I just can't tell that there's like really powder coming out. I think that the, br I don't know if it's a problem with the brush or the dispenser or what. And then if you change it to buff, you just have to buff so hard that I feel like it disrupts whatever like minimal found cream foundation I'm wearing underneath. So I just, you have to like do it so hard. I just don't feel like it's a very, I'm not one to go in like really hard like that with a brush on my face. So I'm not, and that's why I'm like, well, the main reason I want this is something that I can just lightly dust over and know that I'm getting kind of additional SPF coverage on my face, and I just don't, I'm not confident enough in what this dispenses, and I don't, I mean, I don't really feel like it's very radiant looking on the skin either, so overall, this was just kind of a miss for me, like, I don't know if I got, like, a, a bum like dispenser I don't think so though because it will like release product but like I'm saying I feel like it gets trapped in the middle and I don't I don't feel like it comes I don't know maybe I I just don't like it end of story <laughs> but you'll see it in action in the video so I think that that's all the rambling that I have to do before we get into showing you my skincare and this makeup look I'd love to know what your kind of summer eco sun care makeup products are. Make sure that you go check out Andy's video and I hope you enjoyed seeing this collaboration. I'm sorry I didn't have a video this week on Wednesday, it's just my eye prevented me from filming honestly. I am going out of town in a couple of days and coming back and moving apartments so it's going to be kind of a crapshoot what sorts of videos I'm going to have up. I am intending to pre-film a video to have up while I'm in California next weekend. Um, I don't know if I'll have a video coming this Wednesday. I'm gonna try, but I may just need to take like a little hiatus from two videos a week for a little while. Now let's get into the look. So yes, of course I had to lose part of my footage, but just refilmed it the following morning for you. This is the Cary Gran Hydrating Tonic that came in last month's Beauty Heroes box. It's a lavender scented hydrosol and it's just beautiful and really refreshing to the skin in the morning. Then I'm using the Kahina Eye Serum. This was actually the very first Beauty Heroes product I ever got to try last September and I'm still using it. I was only using it in the morning for a while, now I'm using it morning and evening. This is the Provise Nutrify Level 1-6 to Tonic. This is probably my favorite skincare product of the summer so far. It's like a drink of water and vitamins to your skin in the morning. It's so, so, so refreshing and cooling and hydrating and I'm obsessed with it. This is the Cary Gran 365 SPF 28, last month's Beauty Heroes Hero product and I wanted to show you guys how it applies. I always shake it up really well and go in with one pump, which looks like that, massaged into my face. Now you'll see when it's going on that it does have a bit of a white cast and it can take a little while to rub it in. By a while, I mean like a minute or something. But I just try and work it in quite well to my skin. Opportunity for some morning facial massage and you can see a bit of a white cast, but it should disappear by the end of this clip. That's it for my skincare, let's move into the makeup. Okay, back to the real day I was trying to film this video. My hair actually looked decent here and that's the only shot. This is the Honest 
Company Cream Foundation in the shade Linen. I've been reaching for this just because I think the coverage is really quite good and it doesn't feel too heavy on my skin. I really just need a little bit of light coverage and sort of color correction in the center of my face. And then I've been going in first, initially blending it in with a flat topped brush just to maintain some of the coverage. And my skin doesn't really have many dry patches now, so it's kind of nice to first buff it in with a brush, which before my skin was always too dry to do that. Now it works quite well. This is a Trish McAvoy brush. Then I'm just kind of doing a little finishing step with the beauty blender because I don't know I just I love the feel of a damp beauty blender on my face I just think it feels really really nice and just gives a nice very moisturized glowy dewy finish this is the studio 78 corrector in the lighter of the shades at dawn I'm just patting that under my eyes and then blending it in with a beauty blender. This is the Ilia powder that I talked about in the intro. So you're gonna see it in action along with my disgruntled, confused looking face, like trying to get the product to come out in the open position. I felt like I got some of the product to dispense and now I'm just setting all the places that I had put cream product really mostly under my eyes, nose, chin. I'm gonna go on my forehead as well. And you can see I'm really kind of trying to apply some decent pressure. Yeah, I don't know. D tell me if you think it looks like I have any powder on my face. I don't know, I'm confused by the product. Now I'm just gonna comb my brows out before I fill them in. This is the Anastasia Brow Definer in Medium Brown. I adore this product so much. Just the ease of not having to dip into a powder with a brush has been just life to me, basically. I do wish that I had filled in my brows a little bit more naturally for this look. When I saw them back, I was like, oh, those are like a little, a little intense. I kind of like to do a more natural brow, but I think because I have so few kind of like steps and things in my makeup routine now, I kind of maybe overly focus on the things I do, still do, which are always brows and lips. This is me being exasperated with my hair. <laughs> I'm gonna curl my lashes with this beautiful work of art, the Surat Beauty Releve Eyelash Curler. I mean like, how sexy does a black eyelash curler look like that? It's just like absolutely stunning. I'm totally obsessed with this product still. This is the Antonym Eye Pencil in Noir. I think it's called Thank You Melody who sent this to me. I've been liking it. I'm just going to line my lower waterline about three quarters of the way, just sort of one quick swipe. And then I'm also going to take it about a third of the way on the actual lash line. K.R. Weiss Eyeshadow in Wisdom. I've been loving this as lower lash line definition to kind of buff out, smudge out, subtly smoke out that eyeliner. This is a Wayne Goss number no. six brush, which is also just such luxury. I love the Wayne Goss brushes. They just make applying makeup so so pleasurable so i'm just smudging out that eyeliner i actually find that the antonym eye pencil has pretty decent lasting power and doesn't smudge or transfer too badly on me so i'm a fan Just for the sake of the video, I decided to throw a little bit of Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara on the lower lashes. I hadn't really been doing this, you know, during my typical day, work day. This is the Trish McAvoy, I can't even, I don't know exactly what it's called, it's like an eye brightening stick in the color Shell. I really like this for the inner corner because it's not shimmery, it's just a matte brightening 
creamy pencil basically and I like that a lot. RMS Faridi Bronzer, multi-purpose product of like life for me. This functions as a blush and bronzer and highlighter kind of all in one, although I am gonna end up going in with an additional highlight. But like, look at the color that it gives to my skin. I just feel for people that have similar undertones and coloring to me, it's a beautiful product. It really plays off pink undertones in the skin, I feel like, because there is a lot of pink and kind of red in it, but I don't know, I'm just totally obsessed with it. I do it on the cheeks, cheekbones, temple, bridge of the nose, and this is a Trish McAvoy slanted kabuki brush. Just an excuse to use the Modern Minerals Moonstone Highlight, which is stunning. I'm doing that on the bridge of my nose, cheekbones, and cupid's bow. Those are the only places I like to highlight. Does anyone else have an issue with the tip of the nose highlight trend? I think it's so weird. I also don't really care for a brow bone highlight. So personal preference, but these are my preferred highlighting locales. And this is a Real Techniques Expert face brush, which is my favorite brush for blending and cream highlight. Very hyper specific use. <laughs> and this is me thinking about what I have to do next and it's just my lips. Aromi liquid lipstick in electric orchid is what I decided to go for. I am first lining my lips with the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk. I don't have a lip liner that's that sort of electric bright pink color, but I find that lining the lips with just a neutral nude lip liner does the trick just fine. This color is basically everything. It doesn't show up, I don't know, really true to life on video, unfortunately. I think it picks up warmer on camera than it actually is. But I just, I love the Aromi Liquid Lipstick so, so, so much. This one, for some reason, requires two coats to get fully opaque, but once I've done that, it just has the same performance and lasting power as the other Aromi Liquid Lipsticks that I have. I also find that this is really easy to sort of naturally overdraw your lips with. My lips are, when you see the end result, are slightly overdrawn on the top, just to give kind of a fuller top lip look. And yeah, I don't know, this formula and color are just really forgiving for that technique. So that's it. This is the finished look and some glamour shots of me here at the end. I hope you enjoyed seeing this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.